Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I'm gonna to do a side-by-side -side trim comparison of the all new 2024 Hyundai Kona in the SEL, SEL Convenience and Limited trim levels. Now, like I've done on other vehicles in Hyundai's lineup here on the channel, I believe these side-by-side -side trim comparisons are extremely helpful for those that are looking for the Kona, but might not understand or know uh, what each trim level has to offer and haven't decided which one would be the best fit for them. So I think these three are gonna be the most popular within the lineup, but of course this leaves out the base SE as well as the N-Line trims, uh, which are kind of, you know, a little bit less common in the lineup, especially from what you'll find on your local dealership. So I think these three are going to be the most popular across the lineup. So without further ado, let's not waste some more time and get right into it. So taking a look at the three Konas in front of me today, on my left I have the SEL finished in denim blue with the gray cloth interior. In the middle I have the SEL Convenience finished in Soltronic orange with the black cloth interior. And then finally on my right I have the Limited finished in Neoteric yellow with the black HTEX leatherette. Now in terms of the color palette for the Kona lineup, uh, you're gonna be able to get a base model SE all the way through the top limited in every single exterior and interior color available, uh, which is something that Hyundai typically excludes some of the base models on certain vehicles, uh, access to some of the exterior colors. Uh, it's a little bit weird in that regard, but the Kona luckily has every single trim level and color palette available, minus the end line, which does have some uh, specifics in terms of only offering one interior color option and does have some exclusive exterior two-tone black roof options, I believe on the red, white, and one of the gray exteriors, which is not going to be available if you do choose an SE through a limited. So now that we know a little bit more about the exterior and interior color palette between all three of these vehicles, I wanna go ahead and run through each trim side by side, go through some of the standout features, main differences that you're gaining uh, moving up the trim lineup, as well as cover the exact pricing information between all three of these as well. Now, even though all three of these, as seen in front of me, are gonna be the all-wheel drive variant in each respective trim level, I wanna go ahead and mention the pricing for front-wheel drive and then add $1,500 if you are looking at an all-wheel drive version uh, for any three of these models. So starting out with the SEL front-wheel drive, this vehicle is gonna come in at $26,975, including destination. And overall, the SEL is gonna be a very nice step up from the standard SE. Some of the main differences that you're gonna be getting are the 18-inch alloy wheels on the exterior, heated side mirrors with LED turn signal integration, the roof side rails, rear privacy glass, leather wrapped steering wheel as well as shift knob, the power driver seat with two-way lumbar, the front passenger seat height adjustment that is a manual design, dual automatic temperature control, rear AC vents as well as the cargo area cover uh, for a little bit of additional privacy. So those are gonna be the main standout features that you're gaining over the base model SE Kona, uh, which still is very, very well equipped. Now anyway, starting at the front end of the SEL, every Kona is gonna come standard with LED projector headlights, both low and high beam, as well as LED daytime rain lights in that housing up there. Now unfortunately, it does not illuminate across the entire width of the vehicle unless you get the top limited trim. You have some nice silver accents here around the edges of the front bumper, but a lot of standard black textured plastic as well. Every Kona will come with the aerodynamic grille shutters, which helps with aerodynamics and fuel efficiency, uh, basically opens and closes depending on the cooling needs and uh, everything like that. Coming around the side of the Kona, like I said, you do get these 18 inch gloss black and machine finished alloy wheels as part of this package. You have the standard textured plastic cladding on the outside. Here's your turn signal integration. They are gonna be body color mirror caps. Standard proximity entry on both front door handles, so no digital key or anything like that. And then coming out back, you will find some more LED lighting, although it is a little bit partial. Uh, you have the LED running lights up top, the LED brake lights, and then incandescent turn signals and reverse lights at the bottom of that assembly. There's the black plastic that wraps around the rear bumper, H-Track badge for all-wheel drive equipped Konas. There's your backup camera, nice large badging, rear window wiper. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much gonna be it for the exterior of the SEL, a very nice looking model. Um, and like I said, keeping the price point in check. Now taking a look on the interior, this one has the gray cloth option, but black is going to be available as well if you prefer that. There's a look at the door panel, pretty monotone, power windows, mirrors and locks, automatic driver side window only. There's the power driver seat with lumbar that you do gain over that of the standard SC. And there's gonna be a look at the dashboard. Now go ahead and stepping inside and starting this vehicle up. You will immediately notice that you get some of the updated technology here on the inside. 
uh, versus some of the last generation vehicles. So the Kona was one of the first to debut uh, with the CCNC systems from Hyundai. This one is the light variant, which means it does not have built-in navigation, but does have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And there you can immediately see the new overall UI theme, uh, which I do have dedicated videos here on the channel going over that in a little bit more detail. So in front of the driver, you're gonna find the standard infotainment digital cluster, which is digital in design, uh, but you do have a 4.2 inch display in the center, which is controlled on the left side of the steering wheel. Uh, but outside of that, you do have a fixed speedometer and tachometer on the left and right hand side, respectively. There's your leather wrapped steering wheel, audio multimedia controls on the right side, uh, your cluster controls, as well as regular cruise control, lane fall assist here on the left. There's your automatic headlights with auto high beam assist as standard. Some of your controls on the left side. And then moving over here to that 12.3 inch infotainment system. Very easy to use, very nice system. Uh, once again, make sure to check out that video if you're curious about that. Uh, once again, no built-in navigation, dual zone automatic climate control. One of the other big differences here is gonna be in the center console, you get a traditional shifter. Uh, so this is a mechanical type, not shift by wire like we'll see in the other two trim levels here in this video. Uh, so that does change the entire center console layout quite a bit. You do have your drive mode select as well as your center differential lock for all wheel drive versions. USB-C charging and data ports up front. And then here's your cup holder layout kind of in an S shape right there. Same proximity key fob with remote start. And of course you do get Blue Link Plus on this vehicle if purchased new. Center console layout, pretty standard stuff there. There's your gray accented headliner, incandescent lighting for the Vandy, manual dimming mirror. Here's your overhead incandescent lighting, Blue Link SOS, passenger airbag, and no power sunroof is going to be available on the SCL as seen here. Take a quick look out back. Materials are gonna be all the same as the front. Of course, you do have the same cloth seating surfaces. And then with the SEL over the base SE, you are getting the rear AC vents and every Kona will come standard with two USB-C charging ports down there. No map pockets on either of the front seat. And there's gonna be a look at the front dashboard just in case you're curious. But yeah, that's gonna be basically what you're getting here with the standard SEL. Very nice equipped vehicle in the upper $20,000 price range, depending on how you equip it. But now I wanna move on to the SEL Convenience, which is the Soltronic Orange one right here. Now, in terms of pricing, the SEL Convenience front wheel drive starts at $29,175, including destination. Once again, add $1,500 for all wheel drive. Uh, so just under or just over the $30,000 price point, depending on if you equip it with all wheel drive and some of the additional accessories on it. Uh, but in terms of the main differences you're getting in terms of the features and options, uh, it's a relatively big step up from the standard SE and the package does cost $2,200 more. So in terms of some of the standout items, you're getting the full 12.3 inch LCD cluster with the shift by wire on the column. Uh, you have paddle shifters for the IVT transmission, heated front seats, power front windows with auto up down, LED overhead interior lighting, auto dimming rear view mirror, wireless device charging, ton digital key 2.0, highway drive assist one, navigation based smart cruise control. Uh, so you do have the built-in navigation to the infotainment system. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and a couple other things. So overall, this is a very nice package. It gives you a lot of the most up-to-date technology, including Digital Key 2, uh, which allows iOS as well as Android compatible devices uh, if you are in need of those features. Now, looking on the exterior, it's actually gonna be very, very similar and hard to distinguish a convenience package from that of the standard SEL, uh, given it does use the same 18-inch alloy wheel design. The front bumper is going to be identical, as well as the exterior lighting setup is going to be the same. Uh, so really, side by side, there's no real way that I'm aware of uh, to distinguish these two apart. In terms of the cladding, all gonna be the standard uh, matte black gray. Of course, you still have the body color with the LED turn signal integration. I guess the one small way to distinguish the convenience from a base model is going to be the uh, front two door handles are gonna be the touch type. So you don't have the button here, it's just the touch sensor to lock. And of course, to unlock, you simply grab the handle like that and the vehicle will unlock and does have the antennas for the digital key functionality for your smartphone and app integration. But outside of that, I think that is gonna be the only way 
to distinguish these two Konas apart, which is quite interesting uh, given that you are getting quite a bit of features over here with the convenience package. Now, one thing I do wanna also show you is the black interior. This is gonna be basically identical. Uh, if you do get the black option on the uh, base SEL, so these two basically are gonna be the two interior color choices available for convenience, as well as the standard SEL over there. All the materials are gonna be the same, including the unfortunately hard plastic armrest. You do get the dual power front windows instead of only the driver's side. So both these are gonna be automatic up down. Same power driver seat with two-way lumbar. There's the black cloth seating surfaces. And there is gonna be the dashboard. Now stepping inside and going ahead and starting this one up, there are gonna be a couple key differences uh, which you may or may not notice right off the bat. So in front of the driver, you're gonna find the full 12.3 inch uh, digital cluster paired to the infotainment system with built-in navigation. So you're gonna have a little bit more customization and configurability here on both aspects for uh, this vehicle versus that of the standard SC or SEL. Still controlled here on the left side of the steering wheel. Uh, make sure to check out the video I was mentioning in the last vehicle if you guys wanna know how to use this a little bit more in depth. Uh, but you still have the same leather wrapped steering wheel, although you do gain the paddle shifters for the transmission on the back side. And then here on the left side, you do have the smart cruise control with highway drive assist, which changes the button layout a little bit. Same audio multimedia controls on the right side. Same lighting setup, like I mentioned on the outside. To the left of the steering wheel, you will gain the electronic parking brake versus the manual type in the SEL. But outside of that, pretty much gonna be identical. And then coming over here to the touchscreen infotainment system, exact same screen and uh, overall UI layout, but you are gaining the built-in navigation. And this head unit does support wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, although you do need a software update depending on when your vehicle is built to enable that. Otherwise, it should come from the factory for the later production 2024 models, uh, given I believe that software is uh, out and available now. So uh, pretty nice functionality that Hyundai is finally rolling out wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to these systems, same dual zone automatic climate control. And here in the center console, like I mentioned, that is gonna be one of the biggest design differences given that this one is equipped with the shift by wire, which essentially puts your transmission controls here on the steering column instead of down uh, right above where the uh, transmission tunnel would normally be located. So you have same amount of USB-C ports, uh, 12 volt outlet. This is gonna be your wireless charging pad as well as your Hyundai digital keypad. Heated front seats are gained in this model. Uh, you do have the automatic vehicle hold as well. And then here is your center differential lock as well as your drive mode select. And it does change the cluster when you link it to the drive modes. You can choose between normal, sport, and snow. Snow is only for all-wheel drive equipped Konas, unfortunately. Key fob is gonna be identical as the standard SEL, so no additional functionality there. You have the push-out cup holders, which I've already talked about. And there is gonna be the same center console design. Up top, you do have the gray headliner, so same color headliner with the black interior. LED overhead lighting, like I mentioned, which does look a little bit nicer. Auto dimming interior rear view mirror. There's gonna be the LED lighting as part of the convenience. And still, unfortunately, no power center if you do have to go to an end line or a limited to get that. So that's a look at the front. Let's go ahead and take a look out back. Back seat is gonna be the same in terms of all the materials for the door panel and seating surfaces. And really, I don't think there is any difference between an SEL and SEL convenience here in the second row, as you still get the AC vents as well as the two USB-C charging ports down there. It's still no mat pockets, unfortunately, uh, but there's gonna be a quick look at the dashboard. So finally, with all that information in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the fully loaded Top Limited, which offers everything that the current Kona has to offer uh, in this generation. Now taking a look at pricing, the Kona Limited front wheel drive is gonna come in at $33,175, including destination. Once again, add 1,500 for all wheel drive. One of the biggest differences between the N-Line and the Limited versus these two vehicles right here is going to be the powertrain. With the Limited, you're gonna get the 1.6 liter turbo paired to the eight speed torque converted automatic transmission, which offers a good amount of power increase over these vehicles. So if you're looking for a little bit of additional power, uh, the end line or the Limited is certainly gonna be the way to go. You get a tire mobility kit instead of a spare. You get parking sensors, both front side and rear. You get the surround view monitor system, the blind spot view monitor, 19 inch alloy wheels, full LED exterior lighting, including the turn signals down below, and some of the lighting out back. 
satin chrome belt line trim. You get the power tilt side sunroof, HTEX leather at seating surfaces, soft touch door panels, Bose premium audio system, home link, ambient interior lighting, hands-free power lift gate, ventilated front seats, mat pocket, heated steering wheel, as well as remote smart park assist one. So as you can see, there's a lot of feature content that you're gaining here on the limited that unfortunately you cannot get on either of these two vehicles right here. Now taking a look at the exterior of the Kona Limited, there are gonna be a couple subtle touches that are certainly hard to notice on camera unless I specifically point them out. Uh, so I'm gonna run through them quickly right now. Now looking at the front end, of course, you do have the front, rear, and side parking sensors, which are not found on those other vehicles. Like I mentioned, you are getting the Horizon LED light up top. So when the running lights or headlights are enabled, that entire uh, LED strip will illuminate across the entire width. Instead of over here on this one, it only illuminates uh, just the side two for the daytime running light. So that's a difference there. Uh, you do get a little bit of additional satin chrome accents at the bottom of the front and rear bumpers over these two vehicles. You can see they only have the triangles, not the center portion right there. So that is gonna be a difference. And in terms of the exterior cladding around the side and rear of the vehicle, it's gonna be a totally different uh, material and finish. Now you can see there is just a little bit of a shine to it, uh, depending on if the sun is out or not. Uh, but this is gonna be a very dark kind of satin, uh, gray metallic finish, if you will, versus this one's gonna be the standard, you know, textured black plastic. So to me, this material over here looks very nice and a lot more premium than that of the other Konas. And uh, I'm glad they continued that on from the last generation. 19 inch alloy wheels with, with a very similar design versus the 18s over here, same gloss black machine finish, just a larger overall diameter and slight tweaks to the design. We have a 235-45 19 inch Kumo Majesty Solus all season. And then over here we have a 215-55 18 inch. So a little bit of a wider tire over here with the 19 inch alloy wheel versus the 18s over here on the SEL. Same body color mirror caps with the LED lighting, but you do gain the cameras on the bottom for the surround view 360 monitor. They are gonna be heated, of course, still have blind spot detection as standard. You have the same digital key two on both front door handles, but you do get the satin chrome accents here for the belt line trim that runs across the bottom of the rear windows and up into the rear spoiler, which over here on this vehicle does not connect into the rear spoiler and is kind of a black uh, rubberized vinyl material. So a little bit more premium over here on the limited. And coming out back, like I mentioned, you get the full LED lighting for all of the uh, exterior lights. So you have the running lights, the brake lights, the reverse lights, and turn signals are all gonna be LED, uh, which gives this vehicle a much more premium uh, feel. And then finally, you do have the satin chrome element here for the rear bumper, uh, which unlike the other two, is finished in that black plastic cladding. So that's pretty much gonna do it here for the exterior differences of the Kona Limited. Now let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Now take a look on the interior. Like I mentioned, this one has the black HTEX leatherette, but gray is going to be available as well. Here on the door panels, you're gonna find more soft touch materials versus the other Konas in the lineup. Uh, mainly this section right here is gonna be a padded soft touch as well as this insert that surrounds the uh, chrome accented door handle. Same power window setup as the SEL Convenience with the front two being fully automatic. You do get the Bose premium audio system, with it, which is an eight speaker design with a center channel as well as a subwoofer in the trunk. There's a look at the power driver seat, same exact adjustments. And there is the seating surfaces with the HTEX leatherette, different pattern and perforations in the middle for the heated and ventilated functionality. And there's gonna be a look at the dashboard. Now stepping inside, we'll go ahead and start this vehicle up. And immediately you can see you get a lot of the same technology as the SEL convenience package with the fully digital 12.3 inch cluster, as well as the infotainment system with built-in navigation. Leather wrap steering wheel is going to be heated, uh, which is a very nice feature in this segment of SUV. On the left side, you do have highway drive assist as well as your lane fall assist, uh, gauge cluster controls, audio multimedia on the right, paddle shifters for the eight speed automatic transmission on the back side. Same exact lighting setup in terms of automatic headlights, auto high beam assist. Unfortunately, still no rain sensing wipers on this particular vehicle. And then to the left of the steering wheel, you do gain one additional button, and that is for the power tailgate, which is only found on the Kona Limited. So if that's something you're looking for, you do have to get the top limited trim as none of the other ones currently offer it. Across the dashboard, it looks like the same exact materials. And then coming over here to the infotainment system, uh, this is the CCNC with built-in navigation. Once again, it should offer wireless, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. 
uh, either via a software update or from the factory. And I don't believe there's really any functionality difference between a convenience package and this one, uh, as you do get a lot of these same features. All of your hard touch buttons are still there, dual zone automatic climate control, same wireless charging and center console design with just a few more buttons down here. So there's your wireless charger and your Hyundai digital keypad. Heated and ventilated front seats as well as your two-stage heated steering wheel right here. You have the 360 surround view monitor right there which you can pull up and view all of your different angles as well as the augmented reality display by pressing that which allows you to scroll around the outside and you can see the Kona sitting next to us. So very nice premium feature once again. Uh, here's your parking sensors on off button for all of the outside and uh, I think that is pretty much it. Drive modes are going to be identical to the convenience as well. Center console is going to be the same. You do have the same proximity key fob, but you do gain the buttons on the side for the remote smart park assist function. Uh, but outside of that, same exact remote start and everything. And then there is going to be the center console, which remains identical to the others as well. Up top, you still do have the light gray headliner, LED overhead lighting, of course, given this one is going to be fully loaded. Auto dimming into your rear view mirror with the addition of home link on the bottom. So if you're looking for home link, this is going to be the trim for you. And then you do have the LED overhead lighting, blue link, and then there is going to be your power sunroof control, which does also include a power sunshade. A little bit of overkill in my opinion, but it is a decent sized sunroof and opens quite far. So I understand why they did make the shade powered and certainly even adds to the more premium feel of this vehicle. And uh, as you can see, the sunroof itself opens quite far and lets in a lot of additional light and airflow. See what you get back there. And I do also want to open the trunk in this vehicle uh, to demonstrate the power lift gate and some of the other uh, aspects. So in terms of materials, those will all carry through from the front. So these two materials are going to be soft touch. There's the nice HTEX seating surfaces, which are very, very soft. And then stepping inside, amenities are going to be the same AC vents, USB-C charging ports, and it looks like you do gain a map net on the passenger side only. And there's going to be a look at the dashboard. So yeah, overall, this is going to be a big step up versus the convenience package, just with all of the materials that they do use here on the inside. Of course, you do have these center armrests with two cup holders, uh, which I believe all three of these vehicles have, 60-40 split folding seats. There's the overhead illumination. And let's go ahead and pop the trunk, show you guys the power lift gate, as well as just the overall space that you're going to find here uh, inside of this generation Kona. So behind the second row seats, as you can see, a nice plentiful area for the footprint that you are offered. Uh, you do have the integrated privacy hardcover that all three of these vehicles get. Uh, remember that is not included in the base SE. We'll find LED illumination on the left side. There's the temporary spare tire with a little bit of additional storage space. And then the Kona uh, Limited, as well as the N-Line as the subwoofer for the Bose audio here on the right or passenger side. So I do believe if you want the LED illumination in the back, that is gonna be found on the convenience package and higher and not unfortunately on the base model. And as you can see, without the subwoofer over here, uh, you do have a little bit of additional storage room with a additional baggage hook. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it as far as the comparison between SEL, SEL Convenience, and Limited. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below which one you think is uh, more worth the money. Personally, I really did like the Limited down there, uh, but I don't think you can go wrong with either of these trim levels uh, just because it is gonna be a value uh, proposition that Hyundai is known for is offering a lot of vehicle for your money. Uh, but let me know what, which one you would pick down in the comment section below as well as which exterior color you like best. So that's gonna do it here for this side-by-side -side trim comparison of the 2024 Kona SEL, SEL Convenience, and Limited. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and or found something helpful as always. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel's videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to check out some other content I have here on the 2024 Kona, including my driving impressions, driving review, my week-long likes and dislikes, etc. There's a lot of videos I have here on this Kona and in the Hyundai lineup in general. Uh, so chances are, if you're looking for some information or a vehicle within Hyundai's lineup, I have a video here on the channel for it. So with that information in mind, I think the Limited is going to be a great option if you're looking for some features that are typically not found on a subcompact SUV, including ventilated front seats, the power lift gate. Of course, you have highway drive assist, all the standard features across the Kona's lineup uh, here at your fingertips. So uh, I really do like the Limited for what it has to offer, but I think 
If I had to choose a favorite value or bang for the buck in the lineup, the convenience package is a compelling option as well. Uh, given you do get the standard two liter four cylinder powertrain, IVT transmission, uh, you still do get highway drive assist, smart cruise control, navigation, heated front seats, the digital key two on the door handles, etc. And uh, you are saving you know thousands of dollars over either an N line or a limited uh, when compared to those vehicles, depending on how they are equipped. So. Uh, I think the convenience package might be my pick for most people out there. If I were to recommend one to start with, see you know if the features and options fit your needs on a daily basis, and then you can go up or down and trim level from there, either to the standard SEL or an N line or limited, uh, like I said that I'm currently sitting in. So uh, that's going to be kind of my recommendation and overall thoughts on the Kona's lineup. I don't think you can go wrong choosing any one, as they all offer their you know niche benefits and price points. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, what's your favorite exterior color? What's your favorite trim level? And which one would you purchase and why? Interesting hearing that. Uh, have you taken a look at and test drove this new Kona? And what do you think of it as a whole? Uh, was it on your shopping list? Did you go with something else from the competitor? Uh, you know, anything that you want to tell me about the Kona, I'll listen to it down in the comment section below. And of course, all this information will help anybody else that is considering shopping for this vehicle and uh, potentially purchasing one uh, in the future. So uh, once again, I appreciate the support here on the channel. Let me know all that down in the comment section below. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.